Are you tired of working for somebody? Boss paying you maybe $18 an hour. You working out in the sun or in the in the cold in the winter time? The boss sits in his air conditioned office. Well, I think that's where this video is gonna come in. And I'm gonna try to help a number of you people today in starting your business, getting yourself to actually take the risk. Get out there and do it. I understand a lot of people don't have the information, but I'm here to give that to you today. So I'm gonna give you the information that you need to just get out there and start your business. Now every state's gonna vary, so you're gonna have to do a little bit of due diligence on your part, but I'm gonna help you with the tools and what you're gonna need. All right guys, so I'm gonna let you see my face on this one and everything, we're just gonna come out and open you guys. A lot of guys have been asking me how they can make money and a lot of guys have been pushing towards the hotshot industry and unfortunately it's just, it's not for me and I've been telling a lot of people to stay away from hotshot because realistically the best way to get into hotshot is you have to make it your lifestyle, right? So I, over the past five years, have been going back and forth between hotshot and mobile mechanics stuff and unfortunately, well I should say unfortunately, fortunately, the diesel repair business has been so much better this year for me than it ever has in previous years. I don't know if it's just the quality of work going up, better videos, I, I don't know. But it's going up. So what I kind of want to go over with you guys today is all of the ways that you can start this business. And you're not going to start off big, you're not going to, you know, there's, there is levels to this, right? So you always got to keep in mind a couple of things here. Don't spend money you don't need to. Spend as little of your own money as possible and keep in mind that a business is money in. You need to be somehow making money. If you go through and you spend all the money on, I don't know, let's just say you go out and buy the most expensive truck you can, you go buy all the tools you can, you buy an air compressor, you buy all this, 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 and that, that maybe you don't need at first. And it's the same thing with Hotshot. These guys go out here, they spend up to $100,000 at times on trucks, trailers, and, and just everything that they're gonna need, and they don't make any money. So they don't really have a business, it's just a, it's a mental thing. It's a, a state of mind, it makes you feel good that you went out and bought everything that you need, but unfortunately if there's no money, there's no money. Now, you're selling all that stuff for less than what you paid for it. So, in my case, you know, I have, a pretty decently expensive truck for in my opinion um, all said and done it's like you know about 26 grand you don't gotta you don't gotta spend that type of money on a truck right so going over Bertha here realistically you can start out with a car and some creativity you can start out with a small truck and some creativity you do not need to go and buy the baddest the best rig out there you can literally start with we're, we're trying to keep the budget under five grand and a lot of times you don't have to spend all that money. What I'm gonna tell you guys is work with what you already have if you wanna be in this industry, like doing mobile diesel repair. I'm assuming if you work as a diesel mechanic, you already have your own tools. If you're trying to get into being a mobile mechanic, you might not have your own tools, but as a diesel mechanic, obviously we have our own tools. So, mainly focused on the diesel repair side. You've already got all your tools. There's so many guys out here that have smallest setups. I've seen guys with Ford Rangers. I've seen guys with Honda Civics. It doesn't matter what you have as long as you have some creativity and time on your side. Yes, a lot of you guys are out there working your full-time jobs. I do not recommend you quit your full-time job until you know this is gonna be successful. But you're never gonna know this is gonna be successful until you sit back and you actually take the risk. Now, what do I mean by that? You need to take this seriously. This is your lifeblood. This is this is what's going to push you further and further. And who knows? You start this business, you might end up starting another business. So, first step, get yourself a vehicle, right? It doesn't matter if it's the vehicle you already have. Maybe you don't have a vehicle. Maybe you're just chilling with a bicycle or something. I don't know. You're walking to work. You bike to work. Whatever. You at least need something with four wheels and some storage space. That's where I'm gonna tell you to start off. Now, it doesn't have to be the prettiest start. 
get yourself maybe like you know a little four-door car take the back seats out build something in the trunk you know just cheap stuff you can go to Home Depot get some slides and whatnot you know do something like that make sure your stuff is organized though when you're building this stuff you do not want to show up on scene and have an absolute clusterfuck of a mess in there so that's gonna be stage one get yourself a vehicle now stage two is you're gonna have to get some type of storage right now this truck obviously gets used so it gets a little bit of uh you know some stuff gets thrown around all of this is organized to the trained eye i would say obviously if you know you saw that it, it's not the greatest i did just throw the jack and whatnot in here um but what you guys will see if i get this out of here i get this out of here this is how I have my stuff organized. All in bins and crates and everything's organized. I know where everything's at. But that's how I have my stuff organized. You don't need a truck to do this though. You can literally go and get one of them in bed toolboxes if you have like a small truck or something like that. But start somewhere, but start small. Use what you have first. And then start throwing some money at it as, as you make the money. So. One of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give you guys, if you're going out and starting your own business, throw as little of your own money at it as possible. Remember, you're trying to make money, not spend money. So, in my case, my business has already made a shitload of money over the past couple years, and I had to run through and run that black truck that I had for the longest time. That's what I could afford, that's what I did, and I made it work for the longest time, even though it cost me some money here and there, I was able to make up the money for it in the videos, everything that I repaired and whatnot. And then I ultimately ended up selling that truck and getting my money back out of it, luckily. I mean, that truck made probably three, four $400,000 over the course of the last five years. So it was worth it for me just to go and upgrade. Then, you know, I went through, I fixed this thing. We do have, you know, things that don't need right now. Like this truck doesn't need to be pretty. We have a little bit of cancer down there. Yes, I have somebody that's willing to fix it and ready to fix it. It just doesn't need fixed at this very time. It just it doesn't need fixed right now. You know, I think what we're going to do is end up waiting until this truck has made, let's say, another hundred grand, and I'll throw ten of it in it. But for now, it doesn't need it. You don't need the prettiest of things. Now, let's go over some of the tools you're gonna need, right? So, a lot of you guys, let's say you're an actual, just you're just a regular mechanic, you're just a Joe Schmo, you don't know everything yet, but you are a decent, decent enough mechanic that you could go out on your own and you can fix some stuff without any problems, cool. Let's go, like, set that as a kind of a baseline. For the diesel mechanics that already have their own tools, we're gonna skip over that because I already had my own tools and when I was running Hotshot, basically anything that I needed to fix my truck, I knew I needed that for someone else's truck, so I went out and bought the tool. The other general rule of thumb is if you have to borrow a tool, just go buy it, you're gonna use it again. I'm gonna start getting into that, but as a regular mechanic, you can go out and buy, say, like one of them little box sets. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at Harbor Freight. Buy cheap at first just to get yourself in the door. Now, once you are in the door, realize that these cheap tools, you can use Icon and all these cheap stuff in the beginning. Why do I say you can use cheap stuff? Because eventually, you're gonna break that tool. When that tool finally breaks, you know that you use it enough that you need to get a quality version. Excuse me, it's kinda, it's 95 degrees out today, so I'm gonna open the door a little bit so I can talk to you guys, but once you break that tool that is cheap, you are going to upgrade and get a decent tool, whether that's Snap-on, whether that's Milwaukee, whether that's, it, it doesn't matter. Whoever, whatever preference you prefer, just get it. Snap-on I think is a little overpriced, but there are some reasons, you know, there are some times to use Snap-on. We also have Mac, Cornhole, Cornwell, plenty of other tool manufacturers out there that make decent quality tools. So buy cheap at first, upgrade when it breaks. Simple solution. So I'm gonna try to give you guys like the best all around every tool kind of deal. This back here is a little bit of a mess. Like I said, keep in mind we use the truck and I haven't gotten around to this. But everything is still in front of me. So what I'm gonna tell you is get a good set of electric tools. Now, at first, maybe you don't have to go with Milwaukee. I will recommend at a bare minimal, get you an electric ratchet and an impact. 
and potentially a little screwdriver thing, okay? So those three, at a bare minimal, get those. The reason being, there's two things you need to think about here. It either needs to make you more money or it needs to save you time. These save you so much time, all right? I'm gonna give you an example, right? I'm gonna come over here and you can see back in there, all right? I'm gonna get a wrench on that and I'm gonna go like this about 47,000 times. Or I'm gonna go get a little impact, you know, those little ratchet heads with the extended ratchet and I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna hit a button and it's gonna be out in 0.3 seconds, okay? So you might need the ratchet to break it free, but that's why I like my little extend head. You know, that's, that's an extreme example. You're not gonna get a ratchet in there. But, you get the point, you can break it free, click it free, and then hit the button. I personally like my Milwaukee's. You don't have to run Milwaukee's, but this is just my personal preference. I have loved Milwaukee ever since I knew I couldn't afford them when I was younger, and now I have them. The other thing, I'm gonna go over a few, a few investments that have really paid off over time. And yes, I did just use this yesterday. So, I don't know where my 10 went. It's in there somewhere. But you can see this. This right here cost me $300 for this whole set. The 10's still in there. I think it's buried underneath here. Yeah, there it is. Um, but that whole set cost me $300. That is my baby. That is my pride and joy right there. I need those. I use them on every freaking job I use. Um, good hammer, get a good torque wrench. I personally carry like ball joint press and all that stuff, pullers, a Torx. These are all Torx bits in here. Good impact set, stuff like that. Um, good cutoff wheels. I also keep a bolt bucket, drive shaft removal tools, and I'm good. a good multimeter, you're gonna want one of them as well. But. This isn't about what tools you're gonna need though. It's just, I'm just saying, I'm just giving you some recommendations here. Now, this is gonna be an extremely controversial topic right here, okay? One of the biggest pieces of advice to being a business owner that I can give you is to get in physically good shape. Nobody, and no offense to people, but nobody is gonna wanna take your business if you're extremely overweight, if you're just extremely, and same goes with like the underweight thing too. It's like, I was super, super skinny, and you know you got overweight people out here trying to do this people are going to respect you more when you are in physically good shape and people like you're, you're okay to look at let's just put it that way people are going to want to do business with you more and you're going to command more respect as well on top of this you need you need to physically show confidence and two ways to do that. One, you need to talk in confidence. You can't be saying ums, buts, and this and that. Like, I do that sometimes, but when I'm out talking to a customer, that drops. When I'm behind the camera and there's a lot going on, I do it a lot. I kind of have to edit it out here and there. Um, but, you know, that's just, that's how I talk to a camera. But in physical person, you need to be able to look somebody in the eyes and confidently tell them, this is what you need, this is the price, bada bing, bada boom. That's, this is what you need to get your stuff running right. And again, you can come out here and the physical shape may not be the best. You can still make money, I'm not saying that, but you will make more money when you command authority. So to go along with that too, piercings, tattoos, um, smoking cigarettes in front of a customer, having empty beer bottles in your truck, things like that. Some people don't like it and they will, you know, they'll use you once and move along. Some people will say it, they see it and say, I don't want to use you because of that. Luckily, I've created a nice base around what I do. Like people know me prior and that's why they, you know, they call me out for the work that they do. So people already know that I already have that stuff, but a lot of times you will get judged on that. You will get questioned on some things. It just it's the name of the game. Sometimes there is some risks. To touch on this a little bit more off camera, you will work harder to prove your ability to your customer. It's not impossible. I mean, there are people that do, do suffer with certain conditions. Some people may be a little overweight. Some people may be a little skinny. It's just one of those things that you're gonna have to work harder to prove your ability to your customer. You're also gonna have to work a little bit harder to show a little bit of authority. Now, you don't wanna go and be a dickhead you know, to a customer, but you do want to be polite but firm at the same time. And this will also help you 
in the end, a lot of guys, if you go out there and you're in an unhealthy condition, you might get customers that will actually argue with you. I know that I've had a lot more arguments with customers a long time ago when I was super skinny and, you know, 130, 125 pounds. Now being in a better condition, I have noticed that respect from certain customers has gone up greatly. So it's just one of those things that you're going to have to take into consideration. This is a full-time commitment. You're going to be, this is what's going to be making your money for the longest time. So you definitely want to take it seriously and do whatever you can to get in good shape and take this business seriously. The other thing with uh, the whole physical shape thing too, you are also gonna wanna dress appropriately. I'm out here working on my own stuff today, so I'm in shorts. I have a couple of vehicles to part out, so I'm just kinda chilling today. It's, it's like 90 some degrees. But you wanna dress professional, but you don't wanna also overdo it. Like if you're gonna be working out in the heat all day, yes, shorts are nice, but unfortunately they're not exactly the most professional. I do prefer to have jeans and a t-shirt on when I'm working out in the field on a customer's you know, vehicle. But when I'm in on my own stuff, you know, I'll wear shorts and no shirt out in the sun. You know, it's just, you can do that on your stuff, but when you go out to talk to customers and whatnot, that's my piece of advice for you on that. So this video is getting pretty long. I'm gonna want you guys to put some suggestions down below and I will definitely work on a part two for this. But the last thing I wanna talk about is how much money you're charging. Now, every area is gonna be different. If you're gonna come out here and tell someone you're gonna fix their vehicle for 20 bucks an hour or 30 bucks an hour, don't even start in this industry. Do not do that. The whole, the problem is you are thinking like an employee charging that. Eventually, once you get the money in, you're going to wanna get your business as legal and registered and everything as possible. You're gonna have to pay the tax man, you're gonna have to, you have an accountant, you're gonna have all these people that are gonna be sucking you dry. And if you're only making 30 bucks an hour coming out here charging customers, that 30 bucks an hour goes quick. So, realistically, so what I do, and this is just a baseline, my business physically charges 95 an hour for any diesel repair work, okay? If I have to drive to you, we charge a $25 an hour fuel surcharge on top of that 95 an hour. So the drive time round trip becomes 120 an hour for the drive, and then it's 95 an hour to work on your stuff. But you also got to remember, mobile is a convenience for a customer. They're saving time by not going to a shop and they're having you come out. That is not a service that you should be cheaper on. If a shop is going to charge, 95 an hour you should charge 95 an hour to be out there working on their stuff you are providing a convenience to these people okay if they can't get their vehicle out to you if they have to tow a vehicle to you and they do not have it on their insurance they are going to pay a good amount of money to tow it to you anyway so I've driven I think up to four or five hours before to do mobile stuff you get the point charge well dress well look well, act the part, don't be out there smoking cigarettes in front of your customers, don't be out there with like beer cans and this and that, dress appropriately, look good, command respect, be a positive, don't be, obviously don't be a dickhead to customers, but show you know what you're doing and show some confidence. This is where I'm gonna end this video because it is getting pretty long. If you guys want me to do a part two, let me know. I will see you in the next video. If you guys need any work, check out my website, cpstevemiller.com. We do mobile work anywhere from Carlisle, Pennsylvania and any surrounding states. So see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.